Hey folks, Real Honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin, as you can tell by my shirt. And since we're coming up on November 9th, this is a 20-year reflection on the Montreal Screwjob and also an unpopular opinion show. And I haven't done one of those for a while. <coughs> I think the last one I did was on Jim Cornette or... It was Jim Cornette or DX was one of the two. But I did a show a couple years ago when I was still on Ustream and it wasn't the best video quality. So I'm actually hoping that this one does better in views since I'm now... I got a better phone, better internet, and I'm doing it exclusively to YouTube. I am recording this on November 5th as I'm going to be busy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <clears throat> so I've actually, this is the fifth video I've recorded today. So forgive me if my voice maybe isn't holding up the best. It's the only time I can record. I won't be able to record on Thursday. But I've been thinking about it, and it's like, it's a topic, the Montreal Screwdriver is a topic that will never ever ever go away people wonder is it the greatest work ever is it you know the great is it the greatest real life you know betrayal ever in wrestling it's one of if not the it's one of if not both i i i don't think that brett i i don't think brett was in on it but i could see how people would think that because you got the wrestling with shadows thing and he had the <clears throat> camera crew there with him would Vince allow himself to be filmed like that this kind of stuff well Vince was also pulling back the curtain more at that point and the attitude era was getting a lot more open I mean granted it wasn't until I think about the December 8th or 15th edition of Raw that he actually um you know said we think you're tired of having your intelligence insulted um yeah, Vince, we're still tired of that. Stop insulting our intelligence with gender and Enzo and people like that. But <clears throat> that was a, that was like a month after Brett left, month and a week. But the thing is, is here's the unpopular opinion part of it. I mean, I'm a big Brett fan. Huge Brett fan. My favorite superstar of all time. It pains me to say this. It's Brett's life. It's Brett's, it was Brett's career. He can do what he wants. I don't blame him for sticking his sword in the sand, like he said, and not wanting a job to Sean. I understand that because Shawn Michaels was a prick. Admittedly, he admitted he was a massive prick by, back then. He was a car wreck, and he was doing stuff to himself, and he was not good for business. <coughs> but Brett was leaving. It pains me to say this. I, not that Brett's ever going to see this thing. I really hope that I really hope that somehow he doesn't. I love Brett. Brett shouldn't have been screwed. I do want to say that much. Brett should have done the job. As much as it pained him, Sean was staying. Brett was leaving. Brett had that big. He didn't want to go. He had that big contract that Vince didn't want to pay him. It was like a million, 1.3 million or 1.5 million for 20, you know, each year for 20 years, which admittedly would have been, would have been a hell of a contract to have. I mean, if you think about it, he signed that in 96, it would have been, no, let's see. Yeah, he signed that in 96 and sometime in 2016, he it would have finally been up. But the thing is, again, Brett, Sean was staying, Brett was leaving. Brett had every right to want to leave. He was he was 40. He didn't know how many years he had left. He wanted to get some big money. He was kind of pushed out the door. And he was. Vince <coughs> wanted to go a different direction. The thing is, is if you look at the flip side of it, if we hadn't gotten the Montreal Screwjob, Vince McMahon, the character, wouldn't have been born. Vince and Austin may have never happened. WWE may have died if Brett didn't leave. It's scary to think how the Montreal Screwjob, while disheartening, incredibly disheartening, soul-crushing, to Shawn Michaels and to Earl Hepner. Earl Hepner seemed crushed by it also. I think he even had heart issues a little bit later. I don't know if that was because of that. But I know he had heart issues. And Shawn Michaels has even been extremely remorseful for what he's for what he did. <coughs> and him and him and Brent made up and did all that, and that was great. You know, on that on that episode of Raw. That that was that was wonderful. That that was something I sure as hell never thought I'd see. But Brett should have done the job as much as he didn't like Sean, and Sean was a royal prick. The thing is, is Brett would have been able to leave more with his head held high. 
He would have been able to go to WCW. It's a damn shame he actually wasn't able to wrestle in WCW until about January, um, because I think it would have been great to see him wrestle Starcade. But, I mean, even though a lot of Starcade was already set by that point, because by the time Brett came on TV, they had cooled off, the heat had cooled off. And all that white hot, you know, hype that he had behind him had pretty much cooled off, and then they put him in an undefined role. <clears throat> but if you look back on the whole Montreal Screwjob thing, he, Brett said, you know, his contract was his contract was coming up, but he had gone over on the amount of dates he could have just given the title to Vince and said, "See ya." But he wanted to wrestle, and he wanted to do it in front of his home country, Canada. I get not wanting to lose in your in your home country. Also felt like a bit of a. It also felt like a bit of a power play and a bit of a wrong power play. Because <clears throat> I have tremendous respect for Brett now as well, even as bitter as he is now. I, I still have tremendous respect for Brett. He there, there's a few big reasons why he's my favorite superstar of all time, and I encourage you guys check that out at some point. Um, it's on my countdown list. Uh, it's a, or a countdown you know playlist, which is a lot of videos. So if you are on Twitter and you're watching this and you want me to send you that specific video, I will send it to you. But Brett, technically, so technically sound, so smooth, great technician in the ring, <coughs> one of the best WWE champions ever in my personal opinion, and just really was somebody I could cheer for. I mean, I, I enjoyed cheering for. Not a perfect guy, no. He portrayed a great character on TV, in my opinion. His promos maybe weren't the best. His promos during his heel run were pretty damn good. <clears throat> but promos were never his best. He probably had maybe five, ten promos that I can think of that were pretty damn good. The rest of them, eh, you know. But, going back to the screw job, you know, all the stuff leading up to it or whatever. Should, should Brett have been screwed? No. At the same time, because of what Brett did and because of his contract situation, whatever, he may Vince may have thought that Brett would show up on TV with the title. There's no way Brett would have done that. As much as Brett hated Sean, he did not hate Vince, and he would have never done that. So that much I wanted to spell. There's no way. I mean, I don't, of course, know Brett personally, but I'm just, I'm just, it's me, maybe, you know, my, my Markness, my fanboy, you know, <coughs> nature speaking up. There's no way Brett would have done that. No way Brett would have shown up on on. WCW television with the title. No way. And, you know, Bischoff even has said in like interviews that they were in a they were in the midst of a lawsuit with WWE and on the losing end, so he would have been prevented from doing that anyway, even if he wanted to. But really it comes down to Brett should have done business. Cause he was leaving. I didn't blame him for leaving. He should have gone and gotten all the money that he could have gone, gotten. But Vince handpicked Sean to beat him. He handpicked him. Um, I think it was also a way to stick it to Brett because Vince knew that Brett didn't like Sean and Sean didn't like Brett. And maybe it was Vince's way of, well, I'm laying you out of your contract. I'm laying you go to WCW. You're going to do this for me because I still got you under contract. <clears throat> you know, I'm letting you go of the competition. The least you can do is put this guy over. And I don't know if Vince said that to Brett or no way of knowing. But the thing is, is Brett should have still done business. There's no reason why he shouldn't have. I will always, I will always side with Brett as far as I get the reasons why he snapped the way he did. He should have. He got screwed over. Even if Vince was backed into a corner, Brett felt he got screwed over and he did. And he should have snapped the way he did. He had every right to punch Vince. At the same time, Vince had every right to do what he did. He panicked. He was in a losing battle. WCW was smashing him in the ratings. Even as WWF programming, WWE programming was getting better, he was still getting smashed in the ratings. They were losing money. The, the I mean, the, you know, it was getting a little better. Like Austin was getting real hot, but <clears throat> maybe if Austin hadn't gotten injured against Owen Hart um, at SummerSlam a few months before. It's possible that the screw job didn't happen because Austin would have been more ready. You could have had Austin take, because Brett even suggested Austin taking it from him like on a house show. 
Like I would, I'll drop it to Austin, this kind of stuff. Now it would have underwhelmed Austin's official ascension at WrestleMania 14. The Stone Cold era has been um, culminated, you know, with WWE or <clears throat> with WWF Gold or WWE Gold or something like that. I forget exactly how Jr. said it, but <sighs> it's a topic that's always going to be revisited. It's a topic that's always going to be a subject for debate if it was the greatest work or the greatest betrayal ever. If Brett did the right thing by not wanting to job to Sean and forcing Vince's hand, or if Vince just panicked because he was afraid that Brett would show up with the title. There's always there's almost more questions than answers. And Brett's talked about it in his book. <coughs> Sean's talked about it in his book and books, because I think Brett's done a couple. Um and it's always gonna be a topic of discussion. My personal opinion is big of a Bret Hart fan as I am, and I really, I really am. I, I'm always going to be a Bret Hart fan. Even with as bitter as he seems to be, I'm still going to be always appreciative, and I'm going to love what he did for me as a fan and for the sport of wrestling because Bret had some really, really good classic matches with a lot of guys. He got great matches out of Kevin Nash. I think Bret actually might be Kevin Nash's great, uh, greatest opponent. And nothing against Kevin Nash. I mean, he was he was a he was a decent bumper for a big guy, but he was often injured. <clears throat> and Brett did Brett screw Brett? I mean, sure, I guess you could say that. I still say Vince screwed Brett, but at the same time, Brett should have done right by business. He was going to get like nearly nine million dollars over three years. Whereas Vince may have gone out of business if he if the screw job hadn't happened, Vince may have gone out of business because then it suddenly gave everybody a laser focus on Vince. He's the owner. And everybody knew he was the owner, but on TV he was just the announcer, like Triple H said. Like in interviews. Interview clips. But it gave everybody a laser focus on Vince. You did this to Brett. You did that. And Vince was like, okay, I'll be what you want me to be. We're never going to fully know what the exact reasonings were. Or at least, like, all that happened. We have an idea on the reasons, and I'm just giving you my perspective as a fan, as a longtime wrestling fan, because I was 16 when the screw job happened. I was pissed. <coughs> I remember watching WCW thinking, oh, they're going to, I just, I just love, I just love that they got Brett, and they're going to do some great things. And then by, by Starcade, I'm just like, <sighs> fuck. That was my thing. So... Really, um, Brett, Brett understandably did what he did. I do not blame Brett for not wanting a job to Sean. He still should have done the job. Because in the, at, at, in the end, even though I understood Brett's reasonings, it kind of ended up, it's not his fault he got screwed, but he did put Brett in, or he did put Vince in an enviable position. And a position where Vince had no choice. Whether I agree with what Vince did or not, he felt he had no choice. So the bottom line is, <clears throat> the screw job is always going to be talked about. And that's just really my take on it. Probably going to be the last time I mention this. Um, I'm not going to do 25-year reflection or 30-year reflection. I don't even know if I'm going to be doing YouTube by the time 10 years, 10 years come up. I might put all my, I might put, you know, put my channel by the wayside. I might put my channel on another Channel, who knows? Anyway, or on another uh, server. But anyway, oh, pff, it's irrelevant. I'll talk about that later. But still love doing shows on YouTube. But who knows what the future is going to bring. But anyway, Brad should have still done the job, even though I get why he didn't. That's really ultimately what it is. But <clears throat> everybody did what they did. We're here now watching the sport of wrestling as it is um, all companies. And it's thriving in some areas and not thriving in others. <clears throat> in large part because of the Monday Night Wars. This was such a pivotal moment in the Monday Night Wars that it gave us such it gave us some great rivalries and unfortunately Brent got all that money in WCW and they didn't want to do shit with him and that will be the war that will be one of the dumbest things dumbest things that WCW has ever done. Besides hire Vince Russo and Mark Madden. But then again, may maybe hiring Mark Madden wasn't the worst thing, but putting him on commentary was. Because Hudson and Tanay could have been just fine. <coughs> or Hudson, Shivani, and Tanay. Hudson and Tanay, even calling some of the B shows would have been fine. But Tanay and Tanay, Hudson, and Shivani would have been great. But Russo was worse because Russo sank it even more. 
But anyway, that's another subject for another day. Brett should have still done the job, even though I get why he didn't. And that's ultimately my thought on it. So, do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, does this make me a bad fan? No, I don't think it does. Anyway, like, share, comment, subscribe. Twitter link in the description. It's been Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin. This is my unpopular wrestling opinion, and I'll see you soon.